Okay, so this is the first um, practice sheet, I suppose, for uh, isometric drawing. And we're starting with some uh, very square blocky shapes. So if you've just watched the video on crating, this should um, transfer quite, across quite nicely uh, because that's exactly what we're doing. We're just creating boxes. So we're looking at these objects and we're trying to break them down into separate cubes. Now, when uh, what I'm going to be doing with this is I'm going to be kind of working my way through and drawing these and talking about how I would construct the objects. There's obviously multiple ways that you can do this, um, but we're going to start with the first one here. Okay, so whenever I'm starting an isometric drawing, uh, if we go back to the basics, what we're going to do is we're going to look at those uh, three directions effectively, the three uh, axes that we're working on. So we've got there our first line, which is going to be this one here effectively, which is our Y axis. Okay, and we're also going to be looking uh, first of all there on the Z axis. Now the reason I'm drawing from this first plane is because kind of this is my um, profile that I then want to kind of extrude along the, I suppose, X axis like this. So what I'm going to do is construct my crate to kind of include this shape here. Okay, we're gonna look at breaking that down and then extrude that profile across uh, on the uh, x-axis here, the x-axis as we go forwards. Okay, so I've drawn my first line there and that sets my uh, stage effectively. And I'm gonna draw a line coming off like this. This is at 30 degrees obviously because it's in our uh, Z plane there, our depth plane. And at this first point, I'm deciding now sort of proportion. Okay, we can see that the, uh, the shape that I drew around the outside is kind of a regular sort of square. So this distance here, first of all, should be the same as the height to keep the, uh, uh, to maintain the proportion of the shape there. So what I'm doing is I'm just bringing those lines around like this, and there we go. We've got our first square that I've drawn around the shape like this to then break this down. Now, if we looked at this, if we was gonna break this object down, we can pretty much see that that, proportionally speaking, is around about one third of the overall kind of length. So that's what I wanna be looking at here and predicting this uh, as I'm going through, because this is all about sketching. We're not trying to uh, aim for like ultimate accuracy here. It's not uh, that sort of drawing, it's a sketch drawing. So that's what I'm doing, I'm breaking that down by three and we can see the same uh, thing kind of happening over here. It looks like it's broken down into about three sections. So again, I'm estimating these things. I'm still looking at trying to maintain these parallel lines. So we can see the parallel lines there, okay? And the same on this, this plane as well. So what you should see hopefully there is I've constructed that first um, profile effectively. Now all I have to do is at every point where this kind of changes direction is to uh, extrude that across on this X plane here. So that's what I'm going to do. Just one, two, three, four, five lines. And if you was watching my video on drawing straight lines, you can see that's exactly what I'm doing there. I'm just making sure that all these lines are parallel and ideally straight as well. Now looking at this, we can see that that distance and that distance are very, very close to each other. It literally looks like a regular cube that's been chopped out. So therefore this distance, this distance, and therefore this distance will all be proportional. Now I've decided on my first kind of extruded length there. So now all I'm gonna do is copy these profiles in on the back plane. So there's my first line being transferred back. Uh, I've inferenced that line back there like that and I'm just transferring that line across. I can check these are parallel as well. Now it changes direction, it goes down. So again, I'm just going down like this, and then it comes out, again, back onto the uh, uh, Z plane there, and then back on the Y plane there, and I've completed my first object there. Okay, so that's the first one, done. Notice I started, as I said, on this profile here, because that was the one with the most detail effectively, and I've extruded it back. Now we're looking at this second one uh, now. So we can see once more, we would start with pretty much a regular sort of like square to start off with. So that's what I'm gonna do first of all. So this time I'm starting on the uh, Y plane again, but this time using uh, this axis, the X axis, okay? So I'm coming across, so I'm gonna do this a little bit smaller, it's got a bit more space. And again, I'm setting my scene first of all. So this first line that's coming up here is setting the proportion for the rest of my shape. So that distance there, therefore needs to be the same roughly as this distance here. And then again, I'm looking at that parallel line along that axis to make sure it stays uh, in place there, it stays on the same axis. Now, at this point, what I could choose to do is kind of extrude this back, but what I'm gonna do is work out where this, this hole's being placed. So we can see if we're gonna put some lines down, uh, it looks, to be honest, about a, a, a quarter, I've broken down it a sort of four quarters there, and therefore this bit here is taking over about half of the overall kind of distance across. So what I'm gonna do is find out where the center is, first of all. If you remember from the previous videos, what we've done is we drew an X across to get the corner points, and that finds the center. What I'm then gonna do is draw a line up on the uh, 
the um, y axis and a line across on the x axis there to find my center point. Okay, now that's broken it down as well into two kind of sections. So we've got a half there and another half there. Okay, so what I can do if I want to find a quarter is do the same thing again. So I can divide up again through like this, and where I get that center point there, I can draw my line up like that, and I've got a halfway point, or sorry, a quarter way point. And again on the same point over here okay so you might not want to do this okay you might want to do it by eye but it does just offer you that opportunity so I'm doing the same on this axis as well where those two points cross over I'm drawing that point across like that and then doing the same on the bottom so I've done loads and loads of construction lines there okay but what it does offer me is that chance to make sure that when I get that square drawn out I'm just gonna go around it now there we go one two three four sides we know that this distance here is set exactly in the center of the, the the two points and this should be about half the distance across that distance there and that distance there should be accurate if i just do this with a pen you can see there we go that's pretty accurate and i've only just been doing this by eye so that's kind of what we're aiming for now we can see all we're going to do is start transferring this back on the z-axis the kind of depth plane now so i'm going to do this now so it's just three lines again checking that this uh, line is uh, appropriate again we're doing this in a video purpose so I can't actually turn the paper but I thoroughly advise you to turn the paper around as in my previous video so that you're comfortable drawing the lines I don't have that uh, freedom so I'm just going to do this one two three lines and just check to make sure that these are as parallel as I can get them to be and the distance going back seems to be about the same this quarter distance here so I want to make sure that that line and that distance is transferred back and then it's just a case of drawing one parallel line there and one parallel line on this other plane, the Y plane there, to kind of match up the shape and to finish that off. Okay, so there we go. We've kind of got our uh, shape drawn. The last thing we need to do, obviously, is this center point is actually a hole going through the shape. So what we want to do is at this point here, where we can see the inside of the shape there, we're going to do a line back like that. And this is the point where it gets a little bit tricky. It's quite hard to kind of... Uh, conceptualize this idea but we want to go back to a distance where it is at the back now to find out where the back is down here what we can do is transfer this line up like this transfer the line back to the point where it touches the back making sure that these lines are parallel still and then bringing that line down like that and then what that does if we just draw that in there and across on that plane is it finds that point it's transferred it's inference the line down so we know that the depth of this is obviously the same as the width of the actual shape I'm just going to go around the outside of this now so we can hopefully see it a bit clearer. It's quite useful to use line weight like this. So wherever there's a point where you can only see one surface touching an edge, we should be uh, kind of building up the line weight a little bit to make it a little bit clearer. So I'm just going to go around all outside edges there. Again, I'll do this with ideally a thicker uh, point, really, if I had one available, but I don't. So I'm just going to be picking out those edges like that, and hopefully now we can kind of see that. But again, what we was looking at is the side with the most detail, which is this one, and this one here obviously is where we started our drawing and again the same sort of principle we done in the first design we took that profile back to kind of uh, make the sort of extrusion third one here similar sort of uh, outcome now if we look at the last two the most detail is on this front plane again it's in this sort of cubic uh, sorry this square sort of shape on the front so again i'm starting exactly as i did on drawing two going to do this quite quick one line down one line across around about 30 degrees and decide upon my width I'm gonna go a bit smaller with this one again just for speed purposes and we're gonna draw a line up that distance there I'm going to transfer that across so these two are accurate with each other and draw my parallel line in again I've drawn my crate or the, the first uh, face of my crate on the front now we can see looking at this it's divided again into four so if I want I can do exactly what I was doing before divide it up once to give myself a halfway point divide it up again there to give myself a quarter point, divide it up again to give a three quarter point. So I've got one, two lines coming down, and they're gonna basically be these lines here and here. I've divided up one quarter there, one quarter there on each side, one quarter on each side, and therefore it leaves me with a half of the shape in the middle, if I've done this fairly accurately. Now we can also see that this distance here is a quarter, so if I want, let's go for it. We've got a halfway point there. Let's bring a line across a quarter way point there is that point there. So if we draw these points in, looks a little bit off again. You could take a little bit longer with uh, your setup with these. If I draw around that profile, you can see it's there or thereabouts. We've got a quarter of the height there for the total height, and we've got a quarter of the total width there. It could just be that this is a little bit wider 
then it is high and that's why it's gone a little bit off. Now once I've got my profile, again it's the same as on this profile and it's the same as on this profile. We're taking that front profile, which I'll just shade in there like that so we can see it, and taking it back on the Z plane like this on that 30 degree line, one, two, three, like this. Again, turn the paper around so you get it comfortable. Now, we can see this distance here is the same as that corner quarter there. So I'm gonna take my quarter distance, which is that point there, and drop it back to give myself a point, and then just draw in one line like this, and then one line going down, and there we go. Okay, let's go around the outside. Um, just around the outside. Let's get a slightly thicker pen. There we go, we'll go to a fine liner. So hopefully this will pick this out a little bit better. Go around the outside edges like that. Uh, and then finally, one more line we need to do, a bit like where we can see the inside here, is on this plane from the bottom point there. So we're taking this back like that. And again, we take this line up, we take it back to the back and bring it down. And at that point is where it's gonna to be touching the back of the shape. So we can see that uh, we don't find that this suddenly goes further back or, or cuts off a bit shorter than the other side because that would look very strange. Um, in terms of uh, realism, okay? Our final shape is almost like an H. It's a little bit uh, part of this that's kind of been turned on its side, I suppose, uh, and or upside down, we've got kind of two, two ends together. So let's go for it again. We'll do this very small, bit of a challenge. What we can see here is the proportion is a little bit different. So here's where we need to start thinking about our crates and our proportion a little bit differently. So that distance coming down there, comes to about, about there, or maybe uh, we've got about another extra third of the distance going. So we're gonna go for our line downwards like this. We'll pick a distance, we'll go quite small like that one. And that distance plus about another little third like that, just predicting this again, uh, will take us to about there. So let's draw that line down, draw our parallels across. That one looks a little bit off, so it's always useful to kind of check this as you're going. Again, it's getting close to the edge of the page there, so I'll have to turn my arm in a funny angle to do this, which I don't suggest you do, turn the paper around obviously. And now we're looking at dividing the shape up. So we've got one section clearly there, which is the same as on the other side. And that distance is probably broken down about three times in the middle. So we've, we've kind of got like one unit of distance there, three units in the middle and one on the end. Okay, adding up there. So we've got to break this down into about five equal places. I'm gonna do this a little bit by eye. So hopefully we'll be quite accurate. I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna draw a line down on this side and a line down on the other side. Okay, these obviously wanna be the same as each other, breaking it down like that to give me that. Now that distance there, that bit seems to be about the same as the distance going down. So basically that distance down, I'm gonna just predict that and just drop the line across like this. I'm gonna do the same on the other side, making sure it looks like it's symmetrical because it certainly is on the shape above. So I'm just drawing that in. And there we have our profile. Let's just go around this a little bit so we can see that. And now this shape, I'd actually argue it's maybe a little bit simpler than uh, some of the others because we've just got to go back on that depth plane, that Z plane now, on all of the points where it kind of changes direction, like this, and one at the bottom there, okay? And then finally, we're just taking that size and taking it back like this, about the same sort of distance back there, and I'm gonna just draw that line all the way across. Now what we're doing here, this is quite a useful technique, We've got a point there and we're taking it all the way across because what it's doing is it's inferencing this distance out and it's taking it across to the other side so it's going to be accurate there as it is there. This, although it seems a, a, an obvious skill I suppose, is very absolutely crucial really if uh, you want to make sure that your drawings are looking realistic. I'm just going to drop that line down parallel this side and at that point there where it ends obviously it's going to be coming down at this point here and then stopping where it touches the other side. So that is looking a bit confusing there. I'm gonna go over with a fine liner. That point there, I can also inference that down because we can see where that ends on the point there. Okay, it's just ending in the point. Let's go around this with a fine liner. I'm gonna do this quite roughly. So outside edges first, going around the whole outside edge of the shape to give it a bit more line weight and hopefully pick out that. So I'm just going around all the outside edges like this. And then finally edges where I can only see uh, one surface attached to that edge. Okay, so we're looking at parts like this, where obviously if it goes around there, we can't see it anymore. Okay, that bit we can extend up to the end there as well. Okay, just to make that a bit clearer. So hopefully you can see that shape. Let's do a little bit of shading on this, so we can see the front profile there. Again, I'll take a lot longer on this if my purpose was for, for rendering the object. Okay, but there we go, we've got our front profile or front face, sorry, of the shape like this. And then we've got, I suppose, a mid-tone here for this side here, 
and for this side here and hopefully that's a little bit clearer we can see that shape at home and just underneath there obviously that'll be quite dark because we'd be get, getting shadow cast from the underside of the object so there we go it's the first page uh, of, of training I hope you've followed along and if you've got stuck you've kind of watched some of the individual videos but feel free to fast forward and rewind as you need to to make sure that you can get your shapes accurate